At 73 years of age, I'm totally convinced that unless there is some physical impairment or some cerebral chemical imbalance, we have the ability to be psychologically, physiologically, and spiritually sound, even in advancing years. Now, to enjoy good health at any age, there are certain factors that we must consider, certain things that we must do. For example, we must feed ourselves well. We must feed our bodies properly. And that entails eating and drinking nutritiously. It's as simple as that. We must exercise our minds as well as our bodies. Exercise fortifies. Of course, getting enough sunshine when we can is uh, imperative. We need the sunshine to help us get along. And, but you know, the thing about it is, is we don't want to get too much because I'm telling you that too much of a good thing is not good. Okay. So another situation is rest, rest and sleep. We all need it, but it's determined by the individual's needs. Not, not everybody falls into the same category when it comes to rest and sleep. And you know, even having a positive attitude plays an important role in a good, healthy existence. Now, unfortunately, my predecessors either knew nothing about what I just finished talking about, or they didn't practice what I just talked about because my family was plagued with maladies like cardiovascular disease, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and cancer. And cancer, of course, killed my mother at the age of 47. My grandmother died, her mother at 36 of breast cancer and my grandmother had sisters all who died of the same dreaded disease early in life and I have to tell you that I have no doubt that had I followed in their footsteps had I not taken a different path I too would have succumbed at an early age of the same dreaded disease you know people talk about her, um, hereditary situations and we talk about genetics well yes they play an important role in our existence however it's not the whole of it because if it were I'd be genetically dead I believe in the axiom that genetics can load the gun but it's up to the individual to pull the trigger and I'm so happy that I chose not to pull the trigger Yes, we must take responsibility for ourselves. We must take responsibility for ourselves. We must stop becoming ill unnecessarily. We must stop killing ourselves prematurely. This is what is happening all over the world. And there is something that can be done about that. Now, you know, um, on my website, if you go to AnnetteLarkins.com, I have, in addition to Annette's Raw Kitchen and the booklets Journey to Health and Journey to Health 2, there is a set of DVDs uh, called, it's a four volume set and it's called Health Alternatives Interviews. And these interviews address the subject of what we can do to prevent and treat illness non-invasively and that's what we want to do. We want to be non-invasive because our bodies are complicated and uh, they, but they need to be handled with care. So we want to think about non-invasive ways of preventing and treating illness. Now, listen, I'm not a licensed practitioner and I'm not saying that my way is the only way, but it is the way that has sustained me for the most part of my life for most of my 73 years and so since it has done that my way is my way and I'm sticking to it <laughs> so that uh, I would advise others to find their way and you know I want to uh, leave you with a food for thought question 
what would you do or what can you do today? What can you do today to live your life in a healthier way? Think about it. Take a step and build on it. You deserve to live a life where you are thriving instead of just surviving. Take that step.